On Tuesday, it's Donald Trump versus Kamala Harris in election 2024. And of all the possible stories that could have come out of the woodwork in this election cycle, if you had Peanut the Squirrel on your bingo card, well, congratulations, you're the only one because nobody saw this one coming. And it's become the most absolutely unexpected battle cry for one side of things. And, uh, well, we, we've got to talk about this one. Some of this polling data, and here's the thing, and we'll talk about this in a minute. When you when you have polling data, just like in 2016, that was telling America one thing, and it was nowhere close to reality, and the other thing happened, that's when we got some of the most famous memes in the history of the internet that came that night. Uh, out in front of Hillary Clinton's glass ceiling that didn't break. Retro Meister for $20. What happened to the peanut, the squirrel, and his raccoon bro Fred is an example of what a police state is when it comes to targeting law-abiding citizens for no reason while giving a pass to real criminals out there. Hashtag pets lives matter. That's a bizarre story. And look, I, I every state, I'm sure, like I know we d- down here in Louisiana, we have the same thing, you know, laws against what kind of i guess pets that you can keep as domestic in louisiana pets. you got laws against that no way you got to get no some way. laws there there's, there's some stuff we you can't things. have a baker's dozen of crocs or more yeah <laughs> but i like, think I was... considering c- considering how much money they were making on social media and the fact that they had a non-profit running off of that they've got a great lawsuit on their hands I, i'm I, fairly certain have you talked to pu- there's a really important public opinion angle here to be mm-hmm. honest with you about peanut yeah moment of silence um symbols memeology uh it, it won us the revolutionary war uh these are very very powerful things the most damaging thing in my opinion for biden's approval rating was the chance in the stadium to be honest with you and the most important thing that came out of the 2020 thing was that chart that shall remain nameless and what's incredible <laughs> now is there was a, a balkanization period of the right. And I think that they are, it was self-inflicted. I think mm-hmm. that they maybe for many good reasons fragmented into some of these alt right spaces. But we, now that Twitter exists, as Breitbart said, politics is downstream from culture. And the fact that they have tried so heavy and hard for the last month to force these psychological operations and suppression stories down people's throats and instead, they're making rap songs about people eating the cats and about right. poor Fred and Peanut. That yeah. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but it is incredibly important because I don't think there's any demoralization, period. Everybody's laughing at memes while the <laughs> betting market implodes because people don't care. It's, they, yeah, Mark, uh, when, you, when you say the right uh, was balkanized, what, what time period are you talking about? After the 2020 election prior to Trump, when are you specifically referring to there? Well, I mean, it came in stages. It was very incremental. Um, one of the, I think, criminally underreported stories is how important Reddit was in Trump's victory. Uh, there was a very powerful community there that did a lot of very strong work building popular culture around Trumpism. And in mm-hmm. my opinion, palata- making more palatable his very new and unique agenda that was very different from traditional republicanism. I don't know how much of that was planned, but it was incredible. And Mm -hmm. Reddit killed that, I think, sometime in 2019. Very sad day, because I thought that that sort of started this whole period. But then after the 2020 election, you had the, you know, the tens of thousands of accounts that were stricken off Twitter because of the January 6th. Then you had the, uh, you know, the feds using Twitter as a sock puppet to crush dissenting voices about the V word and all this other stuff on Twitter. We were on the top 20 list of information, misinformation spreaders on, on Twitter. Then you had everybody migrate to parlor and it's like, okay, a good move at the time, but then that died. And then people well, they went killed together. It. I mean, they, and the they systematically is, killed it. So yeah, they, well, right. Yeah. Parlor ended. And the problem is, is that, listen, it's great that Rumble exists, but it's but not it for discovery. 
And it's great that true social exists, but it's not good for it sucks building ideas, right? For proliferating culture. And that's what people I, are doing I, on TikTok and Twitter. I, I think that they are like um the holes that you put in a plastic container so the frog doesn't die. Like there's a at least there's a yeah. little bit there's a little bit of slack, a little bit of extra room. There is a way for someone who is who can't say something on YouTube to say it on Rumble, and that's better than it not existing at all. But these platforms, they don't compare to the big boys. And yeah. Mark, the reason I was asking about balkanization in the right is because I was curious, and I don't know if you've done any polling to this, but should Trump win and return to the White House, which makes him one of the greatest political comeback stories of all time, I'm curious if... What are your thoughts on how the right will respond to that? Because you might say, well, it's a triumph. But that wasn't the case in, in the last time that Trump won because he seemed to be sabotaged to great extent by people who should have been part of his party. And so I wonder, has that balkanization between the establishment and Trump, has that now coalesced into a singular unit? Does he have the kind of power and cachet with the right where he'll be able to move an agenda? Yeah, that's a tough one to answer. We ha we've tried to pull on it in many ways. Uh, the Republican Party, according to voters, is the party of Trump and the MAGA movement. We have between 75 and 80 percent of Republicans agreeing to that. And we actually did matchups with like DeSantis and Nikki Haley against Biden. They all got nowhere near what uh, Trump did. In fact, Nikki Haley only got like 55 percent of the Republican vote. Um, so they... And we also asked another question. It was way back in 2019, but we asked people if you preferred Donald Trump's foreign policy or Dick Cheney's foreign policy. Republicans, even back then, said Trump like over 60 percent to like 20 percent. And they also say they wanted new leadership. We polled on who the head of the RNC should be. Everybody wanted Harmeet or, or Mike Lindell won that. Nobody wanted Rana. And they've said many times that they're not happy with their leadership. But at the same time, the generic ballot for Congress, Republicans are doing just as well as Trump. So it's almost like they know they have no other voice, no other chance, so they have to vote Republican. But this is Trump's party. Make sure you're subscribed to Valiant Renegade and join us every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern for the live show.